What's up guys? Just got back, fresh haircut. Haven't had a haircut in like a month. Uh, the first two episodes of the Hellraiser Chronicles are out. That would be Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, and Hellraiser Hell on Earth, okay? Again, I skipped the first one because I did a D-Watch, which somebody told me that that D-Watch has been blocked. So I gotta figure that out. I don't, maybe at the end of this I'll do one, even though it's not needed because I know that the ranking there's a good chance that the first movie's gonna be at the top, okay? There's a great chance. Um, but today, we're doing, we're gonna have to dig into this, and I still, at this moment, don't know which movie I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is, should I do part four? Or should I close my, you know what? I'm just gonna close my eyes and randomly pick one, okay? So, let's see, let's look at what the, what the list is, okay? So we got Bloodline, Inferno, Hellseeker, Debtor, Hell World, and Revelations. All right, so let's pick it up. And I'm closing my eyes, going back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So what are we doing? Hellseeker. Hellseeker. I don't know. Is this the one that has... Um, um, Ashley Lawrence is Ashley Lawrence in Hell Seeker? I can't remember. I can't remember. This is gonna be horrible, isn't it? I just got a feeling this is gonna be really, really, really bad. But we're gonna do it. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta suffer for your art. Right? So that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, I'm gonna open up the region free. I get, guys, do you have a region free player? I mean, if you don't, what the hell are you doing with your life? Because this thing has opened up the uh, Lament configuration for me, the, or Pandora's box, or whatever you want to call it. Because I can, I can watch anything. You know, I can, I can order from anywhere. And I'm really having a good time with these. I'm really having a good time. So you're wondering, where do I have my uh, stool? So I grab my, my stool right here. And we're gonna put it right here. And then we're gonna put the camera right here. And boom, instant tripod. But man, that is really, really bright. I don't like that. Let me see if I can adjust that. All right, I had to put it on auto focus, or not, what is it, auto, or auto mode, because I usually put it on manual mode when I shoot upstairs, but uh, down here, the lighting can be all over the place, so daytime, I'm gonna go with, by the way, this is the first daytime um, uh, record of watching one of these movies. The last two, I think I did them at night. I know I did last night's at night, so, but yeah. We're already start. I don't even know. Let me see. Where is Hell Seeker in the in the mix of the order? Yep, yep. Ashley Lawrence is in this one. Okay. I can't remember that guy's name. He was in the commercials, but he's also in 30 Rock and he's hilarious. Now, does she play Kirsty? I think she plays Kirsty. Now, Hell Seeker is after Inferno. After Inferno. Okay. So I, you know what? This could be fun. This could be fun. I don't remember this movie at all. But if you're not familiar with how these work, if you haven't kept checked out the previous two, The Hellraiser Chronicles, this is not a review. This is a quick refresher for me for my ranking when the new Hellraiser movie comes out on Hulu uh, in early October. I'm trying to get an early screener for it. We'll see what happens. So I'm trying to get these done as quick as possible so then I, that way I can have a fresh watch and give you a proper ranking after I watch the new movie. We're starting off with a car accident. So... I'm also going to be making my lunch. I just picked up some uh, some hamburger meat. I'm going to make a burger on the grill and with waffle fries. Let me show you what we got. Hold on. Let's 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 show you what's for dinner. I got the oven cranked right now. We're going to do these waffle fries. These are freaking amazing. Oh my god! And uh, Publix hamburger meat. We're going to go out here and we're going to fire up the grill. So I didn't remember any of this plot at all, but what I've gathered so far, our main character, which I still haven't called his name yet, um, but he uh, was in a car accident with his wife, played by Ashley Lawrence. So they did this procedure to his brain, and so I think some of his memories are gone because then recently he was uh, in the break room and this uh, co-worker, she, kind of sexually assaulted him. <laughs> he didn't remember that he had been having an affair with her. So uh, it's like I'm watching this movie for the first time. Again. I've only seen it once before anyway. So, so far I'm pretty interested. I mean, it doesn't feel like a Hellraiser movie at all. It just feels like uh, like a mystery. 
you know, and then maybe Pinhead's gonna pop in here. I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like Hellraiser at all. That's a ding, but I'm interested, so that's a pro. And uh, I'm getting my burger off the grill. That's a pro. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be real good. Where did you get this? Okay, so the plot thickens. One, her name is definitely Cursey, so that is Cursey. Two, he got her a present that is the lament configuration. So, that's kind of strange. By the way, just finished cooking my lunch. Oh my, guys, look at that. I mean, gee, should I make that the thumbnail? Fuck. There is no burger than my burger for me. And it might be the same for you. Your home cooked burger might be the best burger you've ever had. For me, that's maybe I just, for, throughout the years, I wanted to perfect my hamburger. And so I got it to where I want it. And now it's, I can't top it. I can't beat that burger. I can't, you know, I had an In-N-Out burger. It's not as good as my burger. No way in hell. I'm starving. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having this. I'm salivating. Just looking. And, and guys, look at those waffle fries. Oh my God. Just pulled those out of the oven. Ugh. With a Mountain Dew and the over the top on vinyl. I just got over the top. Um, I went to Melbourne where I used to live because they have a couple of nice vinyl stores over there. And uh, I went to one of my favorites and they had the over the top for 10 bucks soundtrack. So yeah. Now I can really enjoy this movie while I'm having my lunch. Okay, what do you got? What do you guys? What did you guys eat for lunch today? Let me know in the comments. So, I, I'm noticing all these women are just coming by and hitting on this guy left and right too. So this is the one, his coworker, I believe. And she's not taking no for an answer. So this is the first time we see Pinhead. There's the you get the the one liner, the quick one liner, pain or the pleasure. And this is a. Um, it's kind of like a dream sequence, but it's like, you know those movies where the character won't be asleep, but they'll have like, like a daydream or like a vision and then they'll just snap out of it. That's, that's happened like four times in this movie. It's, um, it's kind of frustrating. And, um, speaking of one-liners, okay, okay. Halloween ends. Um, I wasn't going to watch that TV spot and a lot of you guys have asked me, dude, are you going to do a breakdown of the TV spot? Are you going to do a breakdown? And I, and I keep saying, no, I'm avoiding it. I don't want to watch it. But. I did watch the thing, and I'll just tell you one thing, okay? One thing. Jamie Lee Curtis has to stop with the damn one-liners. I just remember at the end of the TV spot, she says something to the effect of, this will be your last Halloween, Michael. And I, I threw up in my mouth. I, I literally, I'm like, I'm so sick of the damn one-liners. You're a trauma victim, and trauma victims are not going to be spitting out one-liners. It's the dumbest thing ever. So, oh, this is freaking annoying. So that's my thoughts on the uh, the TV spot. It made me less excited. And believe me, number one movie I'm excited for this year is Halloween Ends. I swear to God, I can't wait to see that movie. I was I was gonna go to a like a a secret screening on um, this Monday. It didn't tell you what the movie was. It's through Regal, but. It's two hours and 20 minutes. And Halloween Ends is an hour and 50 minutes. So there's no way this is gonna be Halloween Ends, so I don't think I'm gonna go. But, yeah, I wanna see this movie like you can't believe, I really do, but uh, I'm hoping that line is taken out. But, I mean, she had the one-liners in Halloween 2018 and I, and sort of in kills. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts so far on Halloween Ends on that TV spot. I didn't like it, I thought it was stupid. We did get to see a little bit more of Corey in there and that's all i'll say just in case you guys don't want to know but yeah so anyway back to hell seeker i am full uh, but um i have a thought about hell seeker one thing i do like about this movie is that it explores um taking a character that was once bad giving them amnesia and then making them a, a really good character like this is a guy that was horrible, he was cheating on his wife and all this stuff, and then after he has the car accident, and I guess the procedure that they did to his brain, uh, he just misses his wife, and he doesn't remember all, I guess, his bad self. There's been a few movies that have explored this in the past, so I think I've seen. Again, it just doesn't feel like a Hellraiser movie at all. It's more of uh, just um, a drama mystery. You know, uh, one of those movies that you might catch on like Saturday afternoon or something like that, or I don't, I don't know. It, it's it's a little weird. It's a little frustrating, but um, 
I'm still strangely engaged in the movie. I, I'm not like bored and I don't want to like go to sleep or anything. But it feels like a made for TV movie. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It definitely feels more confined, lower budget, which isn't always a bad thing. Fine perform performances by the acting and all. And it's nice to see Ashley Lawrence back. She looks beautiful as ever. Um, but yeah, I believe she's in the final act of this movie though. So anyway, carrying on. God, I love Over the Top. Damn it. Oh, this song gives me chill. I know it's cheesy as hell, but man, it gives me chills. All right? It's just a beautiful, beautiful story about a man, uh, his relationship with his, his son, and arm wrestling. You know? And one of those things doesn't sound like it belongs there, but it's beautiful, God damn it. Are open. We are free to fly again When we'll see What will be Again we believe One day I'm gonna do a vinyl Would you guys want a vinyl Collection video? Is that something you guys would like? Would you like me to do a vinyl? Let me turn this off Man, I just needed, I needed a little I just needed a little, okay? Yep, uh, oh yeah, here's the studio I got stuff I got to record. I can't, I swear, there's just, uh, there's always too much to do. You know, Jesus, it's just. Uh, and I get the, when when are you gonna get this video out? Are, are you gonna do a uh, Chucky season two review? When do I have time to do a Chucky season two review, guys? When do I have time? Okay. The miles go by like water under the bridge if you haven't seen over the top what are you doing with your life we are at the end of the journey i just finished this i did not remember this reveal at all but i kind of like it um i guess trevor had the box kirsty makes a deal with because she knows that he's a cheating bastard and um corrupt and everything so she makes a deal with pinhead to give her five to give him five souls in exchange for her own soul and so she like orchestrates the plan at the end, but I, I actually kind of like the, the twist ending. It's a little bit far-fetched, but uh, still pretty good, you know, because they, they keep you on a string the whole way. Trevor was spending most of the movie figuring out his own story, figuring out who he really was. And then this whole, you know, scheme at the end comes into play that, um, Trevor's not a good guy at all, which we knew that all along anyway, but we didn't know how it was going to all unfold, and we definitely didn't know that Kirsty was a big part of the puzzle, no pun intended. But Trevor was seduced by the box, and uh, as Pinhead says, they were uninvited guests. Uh, Pinhead himself, even though Doug Bradley plays him, he seems a bit off in this movie. Um, a little, dare I say bloated a little bit, but... It just does, it doesn't seem to have that charisma that we see in those first three movies, for sure. And, and that's a bad thing, you know? I mean, he looks okay, but something's a little bit off. The, overall, though, I would give this one a three... I'd say a 3.25 out of five, okay? Still enjoyable, even though it feels like a TV movie. That's what it really feels like. This doesn't feel like a big theatrical release at all, okay? But definitely worthy of your time if you're really into Hellraiser. And, you know, I was thinking, this doesn't feel like a Hellraiser movie, and it doesn't, but it becomes, it's like the, the Hellraiser blooming onion pops open at the end of the movie, I guess, for lack of a better comparison. So anyway, guys, that is the um, Hellraiser, Hellseeker for the Hellraiser Chronicles. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I don't know which one I'll do next. Maybe I'll watch another one today. Who knows? But I'll see you on the flip-flap.